And a welcome to you inside Carver Arena here in downtown Peoria. And today the Braves will look to cap off a perfect 3-0 homestand as they welcome in the SIUE Cougars. Good afternoon, everyone. Again with Matt McLean, I am Brian Beto. And Matt, Bradley's last two games of the season have probably been their best two games of the season to date, and they look to keep that momentum going today on a Saturday afternoon in Peoria. Yeah, without a doubt, it's looking for three straight home wins for the Braves coming in. They obviously picked up a very impressive victory over Northern Iowa in the Missouri Valley Conference opener Wednesday night. Let's see if they can win another one tonight. And for SIUE as well, they just coming off an impressive road victory as well. So uh, both teams looking to build off some momentum. Look at our key players for this afternoon's contest. Both players in their first year at their respective schools. Yeah, and for the Cougars, we got to look at Rayshon Taylor. Leads the team in scoring. He's ninth in the country among scoring by freshmen. A six foot one guard can really drive the lane, create some problems for defenses. He can fill it up from outside as well. For the Braves, we look at Malavai Leons, obviously the junior college national player of the year last year. He's been very consistent, ranking first on the team in field goal percentage and three point percentage. He played 34 minutes in that victory over Northern Iowa Wednesday night. He's just been extremely consistent, stuffing the stat sheet for the Braves this year. Look for more of that this afternoon. That starting lineups being announced, a similar look as we've seen for both teams the last couple of games, the expected probable starters for the Cougars. You can see it right there. Of course, the aforementioned Rayshon Taylor as well, the right twins as well for the Cougars. Bradley, on the other hand, they'll run out. It's a similar look that we've seen the last few contests as well. Roberts, Leons, Henry, Tavanainen, and Mast. Roberts, of course, the hero from Wednesday night. 20 points, including the game winner in the closing seconds against Northern Iowa in a thrilling conference opener in the Valley here at Carver Arena. And as we've talked about in the open, looking to complete a three-game homestand sweep, so to speak. Both teams come in at an identical three and five record. And teams that don't play each other a ton, despite being just a couple hours uh, from each other, but they'll get an opportunity here today. Yeah, only the fourth time in this series history that these teams are playing each other. Bradley with a 3-0 and record in that series. Last time they played in back in 2008 here at Carver Arena, so a little bit of a renewal of a series here as first time these two teams are playing in about 13 years. And Bradley has won 11 of their last 12 against the Ohio Valley Conference, 30 and 14 all time, but the fourth ever matchup between these two programs is underway as the Cougars control the tip. And the Cougars have a really balanced scoring attack. Let's see who they get going early here as uh, they get the ball in the corner. Carter, who averages about six and a half points per game. As Mast has it taken away, Roberts anticipated that, punched it out of bounds. It'll allow his defense to reset. Yeah, Rink Mast able to get the rebound, but Lamar Wright kind of sniffing that one out, sticking around for a little bit before going back on defense. Able to get a piece of that, earn a second chance opportunity here for SIUE. House curls off the inbounds, cut off nicely by Henry. Still 12 to shoot for the Cougars. And a tough shot forced by Leons, who we just talked about, seems to do a little bit of everything for Bradley, and here they come the other way. Tavaninen, who was hot from three the other night, gives down to Mast. One on one in the post, Mast with the baby hook, and he gets the friendly bounce. Yeah, really a tough move there by Rink Mast, able to get deep on the initial post. All it is is one, two, go, quick dribbles, go into the left hand hook shot, gets the friendly bounce for the opening score. And Mast, who has four double doubles on the season, had six points, 11 rebounds, and the win Wednesday night against Northern Iowa. A foul that's going to go over the back on the Cougars. Yeah, absolutely. Mass was able to kind of box out there on the shot attempt. That was blocked by Malavai Lance, making his impact known here early on on the defensive end for the Braves. Two defensive stops so far. And they've been just fantastic in that category this season, limiting opponents to 39% from the field. We'll get into some of those more rankings as the game goes along. On the other end, SIUE had numbers, and they get their first bucket of the game on a lay-in by Sean Doss, Jr. 
a grad student out of Marion, Arkansas. A couple of nice, really impressive bounce passes there, able to get the opportunity for the Cougars who are out on the transition break once again. Taylor had a good collapse by Roberts and forced the turnover as he was able to help Leons. Braves three and one here at Carver Arena have won their last three. SIUE two and three on the road to begin the year. Roberts, his first shot attempt blocked by Lamar Wright, and he's out and running in transition and throws it down. As you can see, Lamar Wright able to get out in transition, made that play all by himself, finishes it off with a two-handed flush as the Cougars take an early lead. Deshaun Henry, the senior out of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, has one spin off the rim. A nice rebound there by Taylor amongst the trees, able to get it. An opportunity here to build off of that early lead. Off the double screen and more active hands displayed by Roberts. Yeah, one of the ways I, Terry Roberts who came into Bradley knowing he was going to be a lockdown defender. He's been really special so far this season for, for the Braves and, you know, building offensively as well for, for Bradley, leading them in scoring. Cut off on the baseline with Doss. Now Carter off the ball screen. The Braves switch that. Leon stays with him. Top and on him to show and help. And a tough shot off the front of the iron. And a one and done for the Cougars. Mast with his second touch gives to Roberts. Top and on him deep. Three and he knocks it down. Relay top of nine and four of eight from distance on Wednesday night. Keeps that momentum going, knocking down his first triple of the game. Yeah, picking up where he left off on Wednesday night when he made those four three-pointers. 14 points for the Braves. A huge shot in the arm. Relay top of nine and early three ball. Great defense there as he slides over. Cutting off the baseline. And no question about it, Matt. They're going to call a jump ball. It's going to go to Bradley, I think. Carter thought he had that baseline and Tavon Annan able to slide his feet over to cut it off. Boya and Hickman in for the Braves. Boya who played eight minutes against Northern Iowa as they continue to, to ease him in. Leon's from deep. He maybe got hit in the head. And, it, I mean, something caused him to miss that bad. Oh, ball. yeah, complete air ball. Looked like he maybe got hit on the top of the head, as you're saying, Brian. Coach Wardle said the same thing, but nonetheless going the other way to SIUE. <laughs> Diving low is Dewan Pruitt, who just checked in. He was held. Yeah, looked like Boya got him around the chest as he was trying to come around a curl on the screen. Early foul there on Boya. He's going to check right out Darius Hanna to come in for Boya. We'll get another look here on that foul from Boya. So Hanna, the sophomore out of Milwaukee. Lands, helps him, gets the block. Roberts pulls it out, gives to the trail man. Corner, Hickman's been deadly from deep at this time. Taylor on the hesitation dribble blocked by Deshaun Henry. How about Henry just coming from behind? It looked like Taylor had a step on him, but from behind, Deshaun Henry swats it out as we head to our first time. While his neighbors were asleep, our man Scrooge was digging deep. The Peloton bike built motivation galore. More Peloton. His workouts were lit, and he kept finding more, 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 more. As the seasons changed, Scrooge got fit until he called out, Child, what day is it? It's August 19th. The kid returned with a shout. <laughs> when your workout's a joy, it's a joy to work out. I love a good deal. <laughs> I love finding good deals like this because this Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap is 99 cents. I feel like they just marked it wrong, but I'm not telling. Right. Sonic Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap. Bradley out to a 5-4 lead. SIUE will possess, but... 
that block from Deshaun Henry, the senior, getting up. Yeah, the seventh block of the season for Deshaun Henry is one with defiance. Using that 44-inch vertical from Deshaun Henry, sending that one away. A really entertaining start to the game, Brian. Yeah, no question about it. Braves uh, some highlight reels on the defensive side of things as well. And I was saying during the break, kind of a, a divisive set, song play because Go Cubs Go came on is with Hall of Fame closer Lee Smith is sitting courtside at center court. Former Cub and Cardinal, but got the Cubs head on today. But good to see a uh, Hall of Famer that, whether you're a fan of Cubs or Cardinals, pitch well for both those sides. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, happy to have him here at half court. See him in the bottom left corner. They're talking to the referee. Wonder what. Uh, wonder what's going on there. <laughs> he thought hey. Malibu Lands got hit. In the I, head think as well. so. I think so. I think so. Must be talking about that. <laughs> Dewan Pruitt gives to Taylor. Bounce pass. I thought it hit off the foot of Hannah, but he'll throw it away. Pruitt, power dribble, lays it up. Couldn't quite get it to go. It'll stay with the Cougars. Oh, my goodness, the motor on Taylor there. He was all over that play, creating those opportunities. And we see there's, there's Lee Smith there, right, in the Cubs hat, center of your picture there. But, yeah, kudos to Taylor there, trying to keep that play alive for SIUE. They changed the call. It'll go back to Bradley. Yeah, Taylor, a freshman, I said at the top his first year at the school. He was technically here last year, just didn't play. Red shirt, tore his ACL in summer workouts going into the season. That is, that's going to be a blocking foul and the basket for Deshaun Henry. Yeah, right idea there by Dosh Jr. to kind of slide over, but he's late to get to it. Henry sees that, so he just kind of lowers his shoulder, turns the corner, takes the contact, makes it. He's going to the free throw line. Check out the body strength there by Henry to go through that and finish off glass. Talk so frequently about Henry's upper body strength throughout his career here. But still seasons, never seasons to amaze as he knocks down the free throw and an old fashioned three point play. More active hands by the Braves as they pick up the pressure back court this time. It's Leon. Yeah, and here comes the three quarter court little. Pressure defense here on the press from the Braves. Uh, look that they throw every once in a while just to kind of change it up. You see Leon's up there just disrupting that. He's actually guarding the ball. He comes back and switches. And gets the oh. Braves already with a couple of steals, holding SIUE to this 2 of 10 from the floor. They're first in the Valley and 63rd nationally when it comes to defensive field goal percentage. To a good start again this afternoon. Taylor, tough three. Keeping it alive is Pruitt, who lays it up and it rolls in. Yeah, DeJuan Pruitt, a really great second chance opportunity there. Just beats Rink Mass to that and is able to lay it up and then gets a little friendly bounce to go. Mikey Howell seeing his first action today. Its space goes up, had it partially blocked. I think that touched off Pruitt last, it did. Yeah, it looked like Mast able to get a piece of that, went off and threw its foot and out of bounds. So Howell, the grad student, gives to Lands low block and he traveled. to bring it up, the redshirt junior out of Memphis, who started his career at South Suburban College, was the D2 NJCAA Player of the Year. A couple of junior college players of the year on the court right now. One, the other one just got another block, and he'll run the floor. That's Malibu Leons, and trailing is Hickman, but first things first, Howell was fouled. Yeah, you see the type of tempo that Bradley wants to get out in transition, push the ball ahead. Howell gets ahead of the pack, slows down a little bit, and draws the foul. Already the third of the half here for SIUE. Braves with a two-point lead. They're looking for Hannah to cut to the basket. It was finally covered up. Hickman hands to Howell. Here's Alvin Einan. Inside to Hannah, low block with the left. That's where he's dangerous, but it pops in and out. Yeah, they were able to get a switch too as Carter Taylor was going in the lane, guarding 
attempt, but just not able to finish. A good look nonetheless. How about this one? That's a deep three by Rayshon Taylor. From the logo. And a timeout taken by the Braves to give SIUE, I believe, their first lead of the ball game. But Taylor, who came in averaging 16.4 points per game, and he'll shoot it up in rows. He shot a third of their three-point attempts this year, and he knocks this one down. And this is just a guy who's just a flat-out scorer. We mentioned at the top, he can get to the lane. We've seen how big of a nuisance he's been underneath, creating second-chance opportunities. There's the three-pointer. You wouldn't know how good of a scorer Rayshon Taylor is. In high school, he scored a, a game with 53 points at Collinsville High. This is just a flat-out shooter. He can do a little bit of everything. He's got the Cougars with the early lead here. Yeah, the all-time leading scorer at Collinsville High School. 4A All-State selection his senior year as well. And they got to be really excited about him over the next few years. Oh, absolutely, and you mentioned too, he had a knee injury, ACL injury, so he was set, sat out last season, so good to see him healthy and contributing, being a big part of SIUE's success so far earlier in the year. Lands. Really lost it. Roberts has it. Hannah gives to Howell, and they're going to whistle Hannah for an offensive foul for turning the shoulder as he was handing off the ball. Is that a, si a situation where it's like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, he's handing the ball off. The defender runs into him. I guess he lowered the shoulder a little bit, but tough call there for Leons. Doss, Carter, he's got a double screen if he wants it. Goes away from it. Roberts all over Taylor and it doesn't matter, he scores at the rim. Really strong move, just able to drive the right side of the paint, use his body there to shield the defender on his weak side. Because Hal's gonna try the same thing. Gives to Hannah, who got fouled on his way up. Really smart cut there from Darius Hanna. His, his defender is going to come over and try to help cut off the baseline. He just takes that empty space, middle of the paint, takes the contact, earns a trip to the charity stripe. So Hanna, the sophomore out of Milwaukee, comes up empty on the first. One thing that the Braves have wanted to improve upon is limiting their fouls, getting to the line more than the opposition. They did so by, by one the other night against Northern Iowa. Did not foul a ton either in that game. Off to a good start in that department this afternoon as well. Yeah, two games ago when they really started to click that in the overdrive when being successful with that, the main game. Here uh, we could go today, actually. The, the Braves were able to have a big advantage there on the free throw discrepancy battle. So uh, two games back to back where Braves been able to win that battle. Good start here, as you said, Brian, today. Pruitt, freshman from Sacramento. Taylor as Lands helps off him. Carter, finger roll, somehow gets it to go. Beautiful drive, and you can see the Cougars, I mean, at almost every position, they're trying to get a screen, get some sort of switch, and then drive off of that switch. Uh, doing a really good job offensively connecting on those. Roberts pulls up from the foul line and knocks down a deuce. Yeah, strong third there from Terry Roberts. is able to get to the elbow at the free throw line and score it. Carter quickly the other way. Beat his defenders and score. Bounce pass quickly the other way. Hannah lost it, and it'll go back to the Cougars. And send us to a break, 11.48 to go. A mini run for SIUE, who leads by four. Jake from State Farm, if you here, this must be a State Farm commercial. Sure is. It also means it's about to go down. Oh, don't worry, Chris. Things are going to go surprisingly great. Oh, I've been doing this for too many years. It, it means something about to go down. Oh, no. Here it comes. Jake, protect yourself. Have a nice day. I told you. Surprising. Just like State Farm's surprisingly great rates. Who are you talking to? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Dear Exit Strategy, all your pieces are in place. A tranquil lake. A serene sky, an emerald forest, a secret hideout. 
Thanks for being there, just when I need you most. Always, Toyota SUVs. Get 1.9% APR for 60 months on a new CHR, Sienna, RAV4, Venza, or Highlander. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. The difference between a good building and a great building is craftsmanship. It's about taking pride in the finished product. It's about being a professional. Unlike other construction companies, you work with Morton Building's craftsmen from conception to completion. From the plant employees who roll the steel to the company driver who delivers the materials to the construction crews, every one of them are Morton employee owners who take pride in exceeding your expectations. Discover the Morton difference today at mortonbuildings.com. Brian Beto, Matt McLean, as we get a look at the Cougars bench in the midst of an 11-4 run that Matt McLean did the math for me for during the break. So I actually have that ready for you. All hand written, of that. course, yeah. It was all that. As we look at the, the Cougars bench, however, in there somewhere you'll see the head coach of the Cougars in his third year, Brian Baroni. So there's all sorts of coaching relations oh, yeah. going on in, in this game. So Brian Baroni played with Brian Wardle and Mike Bargett at, at Marquette. Then were assistants under Wardle at Green, Green Bay. Bay as well. And then, moreover, Brian Baroni's father, the late Tony Baroni, was a Bradley assistant coach in the late 70s and through the mid 80s under Dick Versace. Pretty he good went to the tournament. Absolutely. Won an NIT championship before he went on to be a head coach at Creighton and some other places as well. So. So many different, uh, I guess, storylines, narratives around just the, the coaching side of it. And of course, they would both tell you it's about the players and their competitors, and they'll they'll hang out after the game and stuff like that. It's all about what's on the floor now. But still, a very, a very fun kind of small world situation. Yeah, and the coach got cherry on top of it. You see uh, a nice little drive there to the hoop, a foul opportunity going to go to the free throw line. It's going to be SIUE and Polk. But uh, the SIUE warm-up shirts, too, I noticed, was put, it says on the back, put family in basketball. And really kind of a real fun family atmosphere here today at Carver Arena. Obviously, you know, both these teams want to win. There's a lot of different dynamics with, you know, friends and family, these guys all knowing each other. But just a really fun opportunity for both of these programs to play against each other in a, a non-conference matchup. Yeah, and to, to build off that and to put a cap on it, uh, SIUE assistant Colin Schneider spent four years as director of basketball ops at Green Bay under Brian Wardle, and then Troy Pierce, oh, yeah. who spent three years here with this coaching staff for Bradley from 2016 to 2019. And he's part of player development and video operations, now an assistant with the Cougars. He comes back as well. So reunions around as Rick Mass lays one in. And of course, Brian Wardle and the rest of his staff now in their seventh year here in the York. So that ranked mass bucket, it came up with really good recognition from the Braves. Uh, that's how you weave at the full court press, drop back into a 1 2 2. The little, middle lane was wide open. Good recognition from Bradley's offense. Roberts, long distance. That's down. Yeah, sweet stroke there from Terry Roberts. Blows a little kiss after he makes that one. Roberts heating up now to five points this afternoon for the Braves as it's now a tie ball game once again. He's led Bradley in scoring a four of eight games this year. Actually led and assist five of those eight as well. La back door somehow over the outstretched fingertips of Hickman. And the Braves finally come away with it. Roberts now will slowly walk it up. He'll go opposite the screen, find space, and he walked with it. Tried the little Euro step on the baseline, but they get called for the travel there as he steps through the two defenders. Jason Kent's going to check in. Did not see him versus Northern Iowa. You get another look. It's a turnover. Missing at the other end is Lamar Wright getting it back and laying it up and in is Doss, who was first team all SWAC last year as a transfer from Arkansas Pine Bluff. 
Yeah, really impressed with the Cougars' effort, especially when it comes to the second chance opportunities and getting the loose balls. They are just going, oh, look at that, another loose ball attempt as we get a steal, but an open three maybe. Rims out from Roberts. Taylor the other way, he's isolated on the left, now gets some screen help. A terrific defense there from Hickman, running the whole way. It looked like Taylor's vision there was blocked by Hickman as well as he's going for the post feed from up top. Really great job by Hickman. A couple of impressive defensive efforts there from Hickman. Yeah, no question about it, Hickman, the freshman from Bloomington, Indiana, has been terrific early on in his career for the Braves. They swing it around to Henry at the elbow. Mass gives to Henry full steam ahead and had it blocked by Wright. It'll stay with Bradley. The length underneath by Wright. Difficult to get up and over. Yeah, that's Lamar Wright's 10th block of the season. Last game in that win at Omaha, he had five blocks. Coming into the game, he was the OVC's leader actively in block shots this season, so you see another opportunity there. Finger roll, and the English allows it to spin in. Man, beautiful move there from Roberts, splitting a couple of defenders, getting the finger roll to bounce in. Up to seven points for Terry Roberts. It's a game high seven. Threw it on the floor, puts one up. Good defensive effort by Mast. Roberts will run the other way. To Henry, corner, 10 for three. Mass chases it down, the Braves get another chance. In the corner, Kent, same spot, different result as this one drops in. Yeah, you're not gonna give that guy two looks wide open like that in the corner. You're not gonna miss him, both Jason Kent shoots at a very high clip from downtown as he gets on the scoreboard for BU. The sophomore out of Oak Forest, Illinois. Boss follows his own shot, raised with their hands straight up underneath, forcing him to retreat. Tough shot, coming from right, no good, and Roberts is there again. Got a man behind him in the corner. Kent, opposite corner now. Henry falls in the air and cleans it up. What a sequence from the Braves over the last couple minutes. Yeah, Henry just keeping that play alive. He's got a 50-50 opportunity there for the offensive board. He snags it, goes right back up. Great second chance opportunity and put back there from Deshaun Henry. 7-0 run by Bradley. They back up by five. Left hand on the reverse. Desmond Polk, the sophomore out of Milwaukee, lays it in. Impressive move by Polk. Kent on the floor now. Steps back, has it deflected, stolen by Polk. Numbers the other way. Here's Doss, and he's fouled by Roberts. Hard foul, but a really good one, because otherwise it would have been an easy bucket for the Cougars, who will have two free throws out of the timeout. Seven flat to go, Braves. I need three Fritos Chili Cheese Junior out. Adding Fritos. Order up. Sonic Fritos Chili Cheese Junior out. While his neighbors were asleep, our man Scrooge was digging deep. The Peloton bike brought motivation galore. More Peloton. His workouts were lit, and he kept finding more, 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 more. As the seasons changed, Scrooge got fit until he called out, Child, what day is it? It's August 19th. The kid returned with a shout. <laughs> when your workout's a joy, it's a joy to work out. Roberts, they had 7 3 and 3 again. Pretty nice. solid. Deshaun's been really well today, too. Brad has got eight turnovers. <laughs> 23 20 is the score. Seven minutes left here in the first half. Back and forth first half, Matt. Bradley a, a burst to go up five. SIUE got a bucket. They'll shoot two out of the timeout. We were talking during the break, trying to think of things that sort of stood out. Terry Roberts individually really has been, I don't want to say picking up where he left off because he's been like this pretty much all season, but he, 
great start today. Seven points, three rebounds, three assists as well. Yeah, he's been all over the place, really active on the defensive end. And every time Brad is out in transition, it seems like it's Terry Roberts pushing the ball ahead and creating opportunities for his teammates. Those have assisted on five of their nine buckets thus far, shooting at 47%, holding SIUE to 36% from the floor. With Doss at the line, he has five points, along with two rebounds. Make it six, as the Cougars crawl to within one. I give them a lot of credit too defensively. They've been all over the place. You see them sw switching up the defense again. And their defenses have really caused Bradley some trouble with eight turnovers in the first 13 minutes. Henry lays it in. How that he, he could have gone at that first burst, but he sort of sized it up a little bit, got under control, still found the space, and good balance able to get it to go. One of the most patient players that I've seen at Bradley in, in a long time, just always aware of his surroundings and able to read that and get an even better opportunity. Opposite the screen, Carter. They swing left side. Doss from deep. Great That's no good. All over there for Bradley. They out, out here on the break too. Strong transition D by the Cougars. Powell swings it in the corner like a wide receiver in the NFL. Hickman able to haul it in, keep it alive for Bradley. Leon's in the paint, spins with the left. Cougars come the other way. Taylor, top of the circle. Offensive foul is going to be called on Shamar Wright, who was clearing out Howell, who was attempting to front him. Two on Shamar Wright, so he might be heading to the bench, and he is. Okay, CME had the mismatch there on Howell. Howell's able to come across and try to front, and just the arm is a little errant there. Hits Howell on the head, going the other way. Howell at eight points, three assists versus you and I. Kemp top of the circle this time. He has the green light anytime he catches on the three-point arc. You see there, he knocks down a second three ball for the game. He's two for four from behind the arc. Six points now for Kemp. Taylor tries to answer. He cannot. Land skies in the air to get it. Howell to Kent. Corner hit the three. That's good. Beautiful ball movement there. Quick transition offense for the Braves. Connor Hickman open in the corner. He's going to knock it down as well. That was a very aesthetically pleasing couple possessions for the Braves. Kent knocks down a three, very next possession, gets a look, passes it up for a better shot, and the Braves have opened up their biggest lead at nine. Yeah, it's all to an 8-2 run here from the Braves, and a lot of it's just been extra passing. You see a lot of patience from the Bradley offense here. They push the ball here in transition. How gets it ahead. Two guys go to Kent because you know what? They just saw him make two three-pointers, but it's all up to defensive recognition. Hickman is a three-point shooter specialist as well. Open in the corner. He knocks it down to Bradley offense on a roll. Connor Hickman is averaging almost 11 points per game over his last four contests. During that time, he's shooting 60% from the floor and 57% from three. Freshman has really burst onto the scene here. And Brian, it hasn't seemed like he's a freshman. I right. mean, he, he doesn't he doesn't have a lot of those mistakes. And the first couple of games of the season, Vile Tavanina was out with a foot injury, so Hickman was in the starting lineup. So he's kind of thrown into all of this and really adapted well to his first taste of Division One college basketball. Carter sidesteps, launches a three, no good. Hope is there to give it another chance for the Cougars. That's already SIUE's fifth offensive rebound of the game there. Just so active on both ends of the floor, keeping this possession alive once again. Carter in the corner skips it to Polk from deep. A foul that's going to go against SIUE. And that's the 16th foul. So after this one, Bradley will be in the bonus. It's been a relatively clean game foul-wise. Either team in the bonus with four and a half to go. Lands steps out and has it spin out. 
Carter, right side, right, pump fakes, gets help from Henry. He's caught, they lob it underneath for Pruitt, who lost it, was stripped by Howell. And the Braves look to push if they can. SIUE back quickly, however. Leon's in the middle, squares up, pulls up, and hits. Triple threat right there, that's all it is from now by Leon. Gets a little bit of separation there. The free throw line extended shot from straight away. Malavai Leon puts it down. 11 point Bradley lead. Leon with his first field goal. Carter goes behind the back. Hickman again stays with him. Double dribble. all over him. Just relentless defense there from Hickman. Very impressive. That's about three stops now. He's had individually Hickman on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, it's been a clinic defensively for the Braves in the first half, picking up where they left off the last few games. They lead by 11 in the waiting moments of the half. at Grand Prairie. Dear Exit Strategy, all your pieces are in place. A tranquil lake, a serene sky, an emerald forest, a secret hideout. Thanks for being there just when I need you most. Always Toyota SUVs. Get 1.9% APR for 60 months on a new CHR, Sienna, RAV4, Venza, or Highlander. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. Arch Madness. It's all about the excitement. The fans. The history. The big moments. Shoots at the horn. Good! Good! It's all about the madness. To make it to the tournament. And March, it begins here. I'll see you in San Luis. Visit ArchMadness.com for ticket information. Bradley's gotten some strong performances by a few folks today, but Ja'Shawn Henry is one of those that has stood out so far, Matt. Yeah, just, we talked about the patience that he shows. Close to the basket right there, taking his time. How about Henry right here with that little block shot? And the dance team in the second row. That's it is to one of our breaks, and then here it is, Henry so strong to the hoop, the body control. Just a really impressive first half here from Deshaun Henry, kind of doing a little bit of everything. Seven points, three rebounds. He's got that black shot. Been really impressed what we've seen from the Braves senior. And you said it during the break, five blocks for Bradley here in the first half. They've just been smothering defensively, holding SIUE to 31% from the floor, just one of seven from deep. They've done it without fouling, just 14 fouls here in the half as well. Strong out of the timeouts. Hickman on the floor. Leons goes down the left, goes up, and will shoot two. I believe they caught that on the shot. Yeah, I think so. And Leons with the opportunity to go to the line here on the drive. Maybe got away with the travel at the catch, but nonetheless gets to the down the lane. You see that quick little one-two shuffle, shuffle, but they're going to get right on the foul. Now 13 of 18 from the line this season. Jonathan Curtis will check in for his first action of the half. Leons, who had two points, but contributed in other areas on Wednesday night. Eight rebounds, three assists versus Northern Iowa. Yeah, well, one thing to look at when you've seen that stat sheet, he played 34 minutes, he just did a little bit of everything. So, you know, Coach Royal says, I mean, he just does so many positive things, super consistent, he's going to stay in the game. Even though he's not scoring, making a big impact. 
lay in, that's missed. Waves catch a break as Pruitt couldn't finish. Oh yeah, lands, if he's not scoring, he's certainly contributed in other areas. Very mature as Hickman is fouled on his way to the basket. Nice job there, it doesn't look like nobody from the Cougars steps in front of Hickman to stop the ball. So Hickman just says, all right, I'm gonna come off this screen, go right down Main Street, take on three guys, gets the foul. He's going to the free throw line. Right, do I say it? Or am I in trouble if I say it? Because if he misses this next one. This is 10 of 10 from the line this year. We're gonna test that the test of the commentator. I will preemptively apologize if this one does not find his way in. I'm on the ice rink right now, but I am sweating. He makes the second or two. Great minutes by Hickman. Right, without a doubt, he's really, he brings a lot off the bench for the Braves, and you know, as we mentioned, just, a, just as a freshman, a really bright future ahead for him. Taylor had his pocket picked by Roberts, who comes away with it. Roberts goes in, kicks it out, Tom and Einen for three. That's good. How about that? Terry Roberts makes the play happen, gets the steal on one end. Beautiful pass, finds the open man, Tabba Nine, and knocks it down, his second three ball. Pulsing up through it, Roberts trying to get around. He's whistled for a foul, that's on the floor. That's a really good foul too from Roberts. He's trying to front and get around to that pass inside. He realizes he's beat, just kind of pulls him back a little bit. Would have been an easy layup there for the Cougars. So that's two on Robert, so he's gonna head to the bench, gets a nice round of applause, and rightfully so. Curtis to Doss, who's averaging 12 a game. They go back door to Taylor, up and under no, and a late whistle, and a foul is gonna be called, I believe, on Kent. Yeah, Kent was out on the baseline trying to face guard Taylor a little bit, make sure he couldn't catch it on the perimeter in the corner. Taylor just sees that, kind of dives baseline, get another look here, nice pass. He's gonna draw the foul. Just a really smart heads up play and floor awareness there by Taylor to get the trip from the charity strike. This is his first trip to the line today. I saw you now four or five as a group. Taylor now tied with Doss with six points. He's got four rebounds. And he makes a pair. He's trying to close out the half strong. It's been all Bradley over the last few minutes. Back door, Howell's left alone, and he scores. How about that for a little set play? Rink match drop at the time. How wide open down the lane off of that back screen. Easy layup, beautifully strong up. I do a really good job fighting through screens, not being able to switch. You see right there, a good drive going to the rack there from, from Doss, but Bradley doing a good job fighting through those screens and not switching very much. That'll send SIUE to the line for one in the bonus. Doss is two of two from there. He came in just at 52%. As a team, SIUE at 63%. Makes the first. Second one is good. The Cougars get back within 15. SIUE, preseason seventh in the OBC. Belmont, the favorite. Again, Belmont will be part of the Missouri Valley next year. It's Tom and Einan. He's up and under. He is on fire. A perfect three for three. His first half from behind the yard. Bradley extending their lead up to 18. Oh, goes down hard. And it's off of him. They're, it was clean. And it'll go back to Bradley. Yeah, Taylor, the strong take to the rim, a lot of contact, goes to the ground hard somehow. Going back towards Bradley though. How to walk it up. About a 14 second differential here for the Braves. 
potentially uh, their last possession here of the first half. Howell thinks about it, instead puts it on the floor, gets to a cutting Henry who goes up and will shoot two. There's that patience once again. You know, Henry kind of cutting over as he sees Howe beat his man. Coming down the lane, gets a great opportunity here in the paint. Just takes his time, a nice little shot fake, get his defender off the ground. Henry with already seven first half points. Hickman's gonna come in for top of nine to defend this final possession of the first half. Feels like this was just a two point game and all of a sudden it's crazy. Really open things up, efficient. That's an understatement on both ends of the floor, shooting now 57% from the floor, nearly doubling the percentage of SIUE is at 29. Yeah, Bradley doing a really good job putting a couple runs together here in the last you know, four, two, four minute stretches as uh, they get one more chance here on the defensive end to close it out in half. Taylor goes up. Curtis thought he had it no good, and the Braves Goes out the half on a high note. It was Nip and Tuck about half of that first half, but all Bradley the rest of the way. They head into the locker room of 19. We'll step aside. We'll recap the first. Cheese Junior out. Adding Fritos. Order up. Sonic Fritos Chili Cheese Junior out. Half time at Carver Arena. Bradley up by 19 over SIU Edwardsville. Nip and tuck most of that first half if you're just joining us, but Bradley really opened things up in the latter portion of that first half. As we look ahead for schedules for both teams, and we can start with Edwardsville. They've had a mix of opponents. They've, they've hung tough with Creighton. They gave Marquette a game as well. This is what they have upcoming. Purdue, Fort Wayne, Kansas City, and then we get towards later on in December, and then we'll see some conference action. They walk right into a tough one at home against Belmont. How about this? Sorry, Brian. How about this for their schedule so far? This is their ninth game. Eight of them have been away from home. Yeah. So you see there, four of their next five will be at home. So a little home cooking down in Edwardsville for the Cougars. They'll be looking forward to that. Yeah, no question about it. Bradley on the other end. Again, they had the one conference game on Wednesday, and they won't have another one till early January, but a tough one coming up against Toledo. Those have been really fun games the last couple years when those teams have had. Same with St. Joe's. We've no had doubt. some good battles with St. Joe's. They'll be here. We'll have that for you on the Valley and ESPN. Then they'll have a mini tournament coming up on right before Christmas before returning home right after. So, so a good mix of competition for Bradley, too. Yeah, without a doubt, a little second tournament here for the non-conference schedule yeah. for the Braves going down to El Paso. Texas for the Sun Bowl Invitational. You see they're going to get some good games here in this next five game stretch too. So some more opportunities to learn how these teams are going to work together, how you know, get some more chemistry, build off of that going into, hey, we already played the Valley opener. So the Valley season just around the corner though. Yeah, that's just good. That was one of the, the, the benefits of playing that game early is you have an opportunity to, to play in another tournament over Christmas as well. We'll step aside, take another time out. We'll take a look at that first 20 minutes of play after this. While his neighbors were asleep, our man Scrooge was digging deep. The Peloton bike Whoa! built motivation galore. More Peloton. His workouts were lit, and he kept finding more, 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 more. As the seasons changed, Scrooge got fit until he called out, Child, what day is it? It's August 19th. The kid returned with a shout. <laughs> when your workouts are joy, 
It's a joy to work out. Butter pecan. Buttercream. Butternut squash. <laughs> butter garlic. Better not come in here with that noise. <laughs> Sonic garlic butter bacon burger. Baseball. Butter, 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 butter. <laughs> Sweet butter. Forty-five twenty-six. Bradley on top of SIUE here in Peoria on a pretty mild December Saturday afternoon. We'll certainly take it. We'll definitely take it, especially in Peoria, Illinois. I mean, we're used to like twenty-five degrees right now. <laughs> we could double that. You know, it's also been hot in the first half. I'm going to use a dad joke. Bradley's offense. They're shooting fifty-seven percent from the floor. Let's take a look at how they got there. And there was plenty of highlights to choose from from both sides, really. Yeah, Bradley doing a really good job offensively, as you mentioned, shooting an extremely high clip. SIUE came out really hung with the Braves the first 10 minutes, but then Bradley's offense just really, really caught fire. Vile Tavon with a trio of three balls in the first half. Their defense, Bradley's defense got a couple of great blocks, of turnovers, you know, doing a really strong job. SIUE stuck with it until about the final eight minutes of the first half when Bradley's able to get out in transition, you know, Terry Roberts pushing the tempo. Open threes from Vile Tavanainen. You know, I remember Jason Kent getting a couple threes as well. So really, that last eight-minute stretch, Bradley wins that eight-minute stretch, 22 to four. They close the first half on a run, as you see the first half statistics. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say what stands out, but really everything. If you look at it, the field goal percentage, Bradley more than doubling the Cougars in that total. They've out-rebounded pretty much everyone all year, right? And then you love the distribution, right? 16 made field goals for Bradley, 10 assists. Of course, 10, 10 assists from Bradley, the one part where they're gonna wanna try to clean up. Nine Nine turnovers in the first half. That's one of the Achilles heels of this team. Take care of the ball. Well, hey, when you're shooting 57% from the field, you don't want turnovers. You just want to shoot the ball because you're red hot, <laughs> right? So and that's another thing, too, the rebounding from Bradley. They're always such a good offensive rebounding team, but tonight they're making a higher clip for those shots. So only three offensive rebounds this afternoon so far for the Braves. Everything looking pretty good statistically, though. So that's how we got here, and it's pretty indicative of our halftime score. Bradley leading by 19. We'll step aside. Take a timeout. Second half of action between Bradley and SI. The best thing to order is when you are sitting at soccer practice, order it through your phone while you're sitting there, and then you go and pick it up. But you're much more of a planner than me. I am, and that's what I love about you. Yes. You know, I'm not that prepared. It's more seat in my pants. Second half of action, about ready to get started. There you see some fans from Carver certainly enjoying what they saw in that first 20 minutes with Bradley up by 19 as we get a look at standings around the Valley to begin the year. Again, just one conference game so far. We can talk about that here in a second, but these are the overall standings. You have the two teams that were skip slated to be at the top. Hey, two one out of order, but Loyola and Drake off to really good starts. And then you see kind of we're at a big jumble in the middle. And again, it's early. All of these that's up for the exception of one is, is non-conference action. But in that conference action, if you're wondering, it's gonna stay that way for a while, standings-wise, for the next few weeks. But you have the four Illinois schools, so that's Bradley, Loyola, Southern Illinois, and Illinois State, as well as Drake won their opening contest. Uh, so they're all 1-0, so they say, hey, we're in first place. That's sure right. That. 
They're not putting up the banner for first place after one game, but that's something that, you know, it's good to get off to a good start. You got to play, got play 17 more games yeah. in, the, in the conference, but it's one of those things, hey, there are five teams in the conference that can say we're 1-0 right now, right? and there are five others that can say we're 0-1, something to work on, but still, most of these teams aren't going to play another Valley game for three and a half weeks, yeah. so a really good opportunity for them to come through and have some more tests in the non-conference slate before you really get into the grind of that NBC regular season schedule. And there are 70% of the Valley is in action today, including what we're seeing here. So we'll update you for those games throughout the second half as well. Again, all not conference action. Drake, Valparaiso, and Northern Iowa not playing today. And everyone else, there's even some other FBC, OBC games going on too. So Yeah, Evansville already a win over Tennessee Tech. That's the other NBC, OBC game that you said. That was a 59-51 win for Evansville. Indiana State, a home winner over Miami of Ohio. A quality victory for the Sycamores at home. That was a one-point game, 69-68. So, hey, a couple of games already in the books. Got one halfway over here. Should be uh, looking forward to a good second half. And a good chance for the Valley to get another real quality win with Missouri State at home against number 12 BYU. That, this later tonight, I want to say. Yeah, that's it tipping off right now in the 3 o'clock three hour. Another 3 o'clock hour to look forward to is a little Chicago rivalry. Loyola little Chicago DePaul. at DePaul. Forgot about so that. So that's tipping off right now as well on a... That's an FS1 broadcast, but we appreciate you here sticking around with us. And you were given a treat in that first half with the way Bradley came out in that last eight to ten minutes of the first half. Really strong defensively the entire trip of the offense. Took over as well in the latter portion. Yeah, here's with possession to start the half. Pardon me, Brian. Where, where we saw SIU, we so successful at the beginning of the game, we're just getting out in transition. I mean, that's what they want to do is to see Terry Roberts right away with the steal for Bradley picking up right where he left off defensively in the first half. Terry yeah, Roberts has been a steals machine uh, this year at Florida Southwestern State. He's an all-time leader in steals at that school as Tavanan was fouled in the route. Yeah, Wright just kind of leaned in there as Tavanine and has the, the drive right down the lane. And a quick out of bounds play here for Bradley. Going to get it inside. Same starters for the Braves. Same as well for the Cougars. Roberts finds space this time. He uses the left. Yeah, the left hand on the right side. <laughs> Not very many fundamental coaches are going to say do that, but they work there for Terry as he was able to create separation for the easy bucket. He's got nine points now. The bulk of his scoring has come in, in the second half. And to be exact, 71% of his points have come in half number two. He's got nine in the game today. Two possessions, two takeaways from Bradley defensively. Uh, to a streaky mass, getting his hand in the way was Wright, who didn't give up on the play. It'll stay with Bradley with 25 to shoot. Yeah, Lamar Wright doing a good job there. Kind of like a cornerback, just kind of reading that pass, able to get there before Mass was able to get it for the easy bucket. Tavaninen might get some space. He does. And he leaves this one short. Mass there, dumps it up underneath. Lands, Mr. Dunk. And SIU, he has it. And a 99% of that play to perfection. But Leon is not able to get the one-handed flush to go down. How about that from Roberts? Zock and a steal. Ryan Roberts. Euro step and he can't finish. Oh, man. And it goes back to SIUE. What a defensive sequence there from Roberts. Closing out, realizing that Taylor's going to fire from downtown. Just gets the block, goes coast to coast with the Euro step, but can't get the lay in to go. A tap to himself, too. Reach and foul on Mast. Just one on Mast. Foul situation. Brad, Bradley has Roberts and Boya with two. Shamar Wright has three for SIUE and then a slew of Cougars with two. 
spinning oh, and having nowhere to go. It somehow finds Taylor, but it's blocked by Mass. Looked ahead to Tavaninen. The numbers he hesitates goes in, and he can't get it to go. Mass there, he does. There's not a cap on that rim. <laughs> Bradley finds out his mask puts it home, finally able to get one to go. Second chance opportunity once again for Mass keeping that play alive. 6.7 rebounds for the sophomore. Another empty possession there from SIU as well. Bradley gets another stop. Foul away from the ball. I think that's going to be on the right, and that's his fourth. So Polk and Pruitt in for SIUE. And they'll get Lamar Wright. Lob to Henry. Had it stripped by Carter. A jump ball is going to be called. It'll stay with Bradley, 17 on the shot clock. Yeah, good job by Carter to get the little strip, realizing that Henry down in the paint put the ball on the floor. On the jump ball opportunity. Stay with Bradley though. 16 to shoot. Henry spins middle, hangs up, back iron. Hulk gathers it for the Cougars. Carter runs into a wall and mast. And now away from the ball, a foul on Henry. Yeah, regardless of the foul, really nice job there from Mass to kind of stop the ball. It's really tough as a center, you know, trying to stop a primary ball handler in the open court like that to able to get it to the half-court defense. Nice job by Mass. Oh, yeah, wide open there. Pruitt gets caught, gives it over to Carter, and Mass comes away with it. Going ahead to Leon when he wow, traveled yeah. before he plowed through Carter. I think he saw Carter slide over and didn't have much of an opportunity to do anything else. Roya Hickman in from Mass and Tabanana. So much like we saw in that first half, a couple early subs with Hickman and Boya, same here in the second half. here from the Braves, 20 seconds. A great defense as Roberts reaches in, gets a piece of the ball, a piece of the man as well, gonna be a foul. That's Roberts third. Gonna stick with him. Time to get it into Polk. SIUE desperately needs a bucket. Four and a half minutes scoreless. They've been stuck on 26 going back to the first half. Really need a bucket. It's going to be out there. Pruitt tips it out. That was really a clinic defensively as the Braves recognize who they absolutely do not want to leave. No doubt. Good show by the bigs. And boy, at both times, great hands by the defense and the coach the turnover. Always active hands. You're going to always hear Brian Wardle you know, call it out. Active hands, active hands. Be aware. They were all over the defensive personnel, personnel in that play. And to Henry, he's got the size advantage underneath. Using his pivot hook to perfection. No, Boya tried to tip it in. Henry goes to the other side and earns a trip to the foul line. Yeah, they're going to get Doss on the foul there on the weak side. Henry just keeping that play alive just forever. Just super patient. Takes his time. Or in the opportunity here to go to the lines and get another look at it. Two offensive rebounds on that trip. They're out rebounding SIUE by 10. That even eclipses the rebounding margin average this year. It came in at 8.8, .8, which is first in the valley. And nationally 29th when it comes to rebounding margin. And we've seen that been the case. That's not a new thing. That's been part of the identity of this program the last several years. A lot of it's just effort and recruiting guys who have a high engine and a great motor and you know Brian World's been able to do that. And you know, Deshaun Henry has been one of those guys at the forefront in terms of just playing with a ton of effort. Always active on the boards. He's got five today to go along with nine points. Baseline through it, bounce pass to a cutting Taylor, and Leon's is 
Gonna get whistled for a foul. Or oh, never mind, it's gonna be Hickman instead of Leon, but it'll be two free throws for SIUE out of the timeout. 15.51 to go. Bradley, a big lead here this afternoon. They lead by 24. Did you hear that? The State Farm thing. Da -da 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 -da. I think we're in a commercial. Jake from State Farm, I knew it. Don't worry, Chris. Things are gonna go surprisingly great. Dad, look! Ooh, see? Surprising. Just like State Farm's surprisingly great rates. I, w I didn't even record. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Dear Exit Strategy, all your pieces are in place. A tranquil lake, a serene sky, an emerald forest, a secret hideout. Thanks for being there, just when I need you most. Always, Toyota SUVs. Get 1.9% APR for 60 months on a new CHR, Sienna, RAV4, Venza, or Highlander. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. at Grand Prairie. The student athletes at Bradley University live their sport and put everything into their game. So when an injury occurs, they need a team of specialists, focused and ready to get them back in action. At OSF Healthcare, our sports medicine doctors have special training on restoring function to injured athletes so they can get back to competing as soon as possible. OSF Healthcare, proud to be the official sports medicine provider for Bradley Athletics. The trip to Arch Madness in St. Louis isn't complete without visiting the NBC Fan Hangout. Arch Madness tips off March 3rd through 6th, and the NBC Fan Hangout at Ballpark Village is the best place to celebrate before and after games featuring restaurants, entertainment, and all things Arch Madness. For more information, visit archmadness.com and click on Fan Hangout. Well, the last two times, Bradley fans have been able to go to Arch Madness pretty good memories I'd say. I was there and I <laughs> was at Ballpark Village. Yeah. Both of those we can vouch. Occurrences. As Taylor knocks in the first. So Taylor now with 8.6 rebounds. But the, the Bears have made him work for it. He's just 2 of 11 from the floor. And personnel recognition that Taylor has been really good. They know how electric he can be as a, as a scorer. Coming in averaging 16 a game. Yeah, no doubt about it. Those two free throws, big two as well, gets gets SIUE off that 26 point mark. They were stuck there for over five minutes. So good to end the run for the Cougars. See if they can pick it up defensively now. Picking off the screen, lobs it to Ari Boya, and he's fouled. Got it cleanly, but I don't think he felt he had enough to, to sort of one time at home, so he gathered himself and then he'll shoot two. Yeah, he brings it down on the catch and good recognition there from Taylor. He's about to get put on a poster, but Ari Boya just kind of wraps up a little bit. A smart play there from Taylor once again. So Boya, the 7 1 senior out of Cameroon. one pop out. Cam Williams is going to come in for the first time today for the Cougars. Junior out of St. Louis. It's Curtis. He's in his first second half action. Gets the rebound. There's lead by 22. They're led by as many as 24. Leon's read that well. Three on two for Bradley. Hickman to Leon's who lays it in. Beautiful. Three guys running the floor there for the Braves, able to get the alley-oop lay-in from Alvi Leon's. 
And right here, Taylor, the open three. And he knocks it down and answers on the other end. One of the few times Taylor's actually had space to knock one in. Yeah, just uh, coming off transition offense, Bradley not able to get back in time. Taylor doing a really nice job stepping into that three and knocking it down. Hickman tries to answer. It was short. And Curtis the board. And this is what SIUE wants to get out in transition. We saw their last game against Omaha started the game 27-5 when a lot of those buckets came off the transition and second chance opportunity just like that. And we're watching another chance for SIUE, third chance ended on this trip. Boya and Curtis getting tangled up away from the ball. Taylor stutter step dribble and it rolls in. And they're going to take a look at some of the arms that were thrown there between Boya and Curtis. A couple of stray little, maybe a little extra elbow going on there in the paint in the middle of that. Referee's doing a good job stopping the play to take another look. So a bucket and a mini 5-0 run for the Cougars. And we'll see what is made of the official review. It's not right at our monitor. It's, it's down press row a bit. So we can't listen in. Well, it, we'll did, you know. it did look like, you know, Boya, Boya and Curtis were, were wrapped up in the middle of the paint as the ball was out on the wing. And there was a couple of arms thrown between both of them. It looked like maybe we're getting another look here. And that was the bucket from Taylor, the altercation had happened prior to that. Yeah, they let they sort of let the play let it go. happen. Yeah, it's kind of like a soccer game where you don't call because of had advantage. Uh, yeah, had advantage. Okay. Review is over and. And it, I don't think anything is coming from it. They might just be talking to the two. Maybe just a stern talking to. I'm not sure they gave him any. Yeah, it doesn't look like any game or foul. So, Boyer was substituted for. And SIUE changing it up defensively out of the review. Looking for Matt, and so it gives to Hickman. Mass to Tabanainen. Out to Hickman, but red by Polk. Right away, and Williams with the slam. There you go, 7 0 run here from SIUE to get it within 17. Brian Wardle wants to talk it over with his guys as the Cougars have a little momentum going right now. Down on the floor, we'll take it with them. 17 point lead still for the Braves. As SIUE. At Missouri, we do fine jewelry differently. We design for you, your style, your standards. Because like you, we stand for something. Sourced, expertly crafted, fairly priced, to buy for yourself, to wear your way. With over 1 million customers worldwide, we think you would agree. Discover the holiday gift shop at Missouri.com. NBC student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley Pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit nbc-sports.com slash one valley. There's a former NBC student athlete sitting courtside as well for you, Marcellus Somerville, the greatest all time. And a 2006 group will be inducted into the Bradley Hall of Fame this year. Just a great asset in the community. Yeah, what Marcel Somerville's done after his playing career, probably just as impressive as what he accomplished during his time on the Hilltops. 
So hats off to Marcella Somerville and what he's giving back to the Peoria community. Well, Matt, that's how you draw it up out of the timeout as SIUE was up on a 7-0 run. Jason Kent, who knocked down a pair of triples in the first half, stays hot with one here in the second. Hulk forces one up and draws the contact. That's the first on Howe. That's the 16th foul on the Braves. So a relatively clean first half when it comes to fouling, but we've seen the whistle being blown a little bit more, with a little bit more frequency here in the second half. Yeah, and SIU we taking advantage of that too, being able to get to the line here as Polk with a nice drive, getting to the hoop, not able to make the front end here. He's four of seven from the line now this season as Henry comes in for top of nine and the Braves get a little bigger. Polk, who had eight starts last year, been all off the bench this year, thumbs up empty on two. How splits the defense before the trap came, but the Cougars able to get back. Nickman has the double, gives to Henry, who slides in. That's going to be an offensive foul. Yeah, look like that one could go either way, but it's going to be Polk getting the decision here as Henry kind of just looks like he's going to have the seam to drive. Just slides over, maybe takes the shoulder, but nonetheless going the other way. Popping up is Williams. He's been effective off the bench in this half for the Cougars. Taylor for three. I don't know, Pickle might have got, got a piece. piece of that. Certainly, definitely got a piece on that one. Falls short, and it looked like Pruitt trying to keep the play alive bounces off of him as him and Mass were fighting for it. Gonna be off of the Cougars. This gives SIUE a chance. Obviously, you don't want any empty possessions, but they get to set up this 1-2-2 press now that they've seen. They've fallen back into man several times from this, as it looks like that's what they're going to get here as well. And the whistle's going to go on the Cougars. That's the fifth on Edwardsville. Yeah, just like that, we mentioned a pretty clean first half, 11 total fouls here and under eight minutes of action. Going to be a lot of free throws here coming down the stretch. Leons, shielding his body from his defender, gives to Howell. Back to Leons, top of the circle. Ten to shoot. Now seven, here comes one more ball screen from Leons. There's the pick and pop. Leons is open from deep. No good, Kent able to get a second chance and he is fouled. Really well done, coming from the weak side as Leons misses that three. Kent kind of glides across the lane. Excellent hang time to get the rebound. How about that effort from Jason Kent? Keeps the play alive and two free throws out of the break. Coming up for Jason Kent after this. Bradley up 20. Since 1907, we've been one valley, breaking down recruitment barriers, hiring coaches to lead our programs, and developing the country's next set of leaders. MVC student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit mvc-sports.com slash one valley. Sweet Fire Bar and Grill, located inside the Holiday Inn and Suites, Peoria at Grand Prairie. Arch Madness. It's all about the excitement, the fans, the history, the big moments. Shoots at the horn. Good! Good! It's all about the madness. To make it to the tournament. And March, it begins here. I'll see you in San Luis. 
Visit archmadness.com for ticket information. Dear Exit Strategy, all your pieces are in place. A tranquil lake, a serene sky, an emerald forest, a secret hideout. Thanks for being there just when I need you most. Always Toyota SUVs. Get 1.9% APR for 60 months on a new CHR, Sienna, RAV4, Venza, or Highlander. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Arch Madness is back. The 2022 State Farm NBC Men's Basketball Tournament returns to St. Louis for the 32nd straight year. Join the Braves in the Gateway City March 3rd through 6th as all 10 Valley schools battle it out for a trip to the NCAA Tournament. For tickets, call 309-677-2625 or visit BradleyBraves.com. Get your tickets today and experience Arch Madness. 20-point advantage for Bradley. And how about the performance off the bench from, from Jason Kent? He's got nine points. Great activity on the offensive rebound before that last break, and he'll shoot two. Yeah, and just really, that's what you want from somebody coming off the bench. Kent, he's a three-point specialist. He's also been thriving defensively as well, playing some passing lanes. Really, really active game so far for Jason Kent. Misses the front end, but he's knocked down three three-pointers to give Bradley a nice little cushion here. You're just joining us. Bradley led by 19 at the break. They've increased that margin by a pair here in the second half, and they'll pick it up with the pressure defensively. defensively looking like an extended 2-3 zone here for Bradley. First time they've thrown this out. See what SIUE can work here offensively. Move the ball, move the man. Skip pass to pull from deep. No good. Lands the rebound. Nice rebound. One hand, it goes up. The Braves have limited the Cougars to just 2 of 13 from deep today. Once again, it's going to be a steal from Polk. Polk all the way in. Avery! Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. To able to catch up to him on that one. <laughs> I wish we could see Brian Vino's face right now because he is just awestruck. Oh, my Check out this play. Henry comes to the side. Looks like Polk's going to get the one-handed slam. But Henry just comes from the weak side. Says, not in my house. Not easy to get me speechless. <laughs> That's the second time Deshaun Henry has been able to pull off a block like that today. This one maybe even better, the fast break opportunity. Henry says, get that out of here. Roberts to bring it up. He's got nine points, four rebounds, four assists. Leading the way is Kent with 10. Balanced scoring effort by the Braves. Roberts does pull up for three and hits. That's so hard to defend. You gotta respect Roberts for being able to drive. He gives him a little jab steps, creates that one foot of separation. Terry Roberts knocks down the three ball from the wing. Hickman on Taylor, pulls up from 14, tough shot. Yeah, just Nicely creates done. that separation with a little, little right hand to push off Hickman. Hickman stands his ground, but really good move there from Taylor. Let's go, Bradley! Roberts glides in, goes up, no, punched out. He comes up with it, both teams on the floor. Doss for the Cougars, finger rolling. A good finish by Doss. Yeah, that's where they really, really excels out in transition. Off of opportunities like that, SIUE able to lay it in. Nice move from Doss. Lands crosses over. 
Williams is going to get it on the ground before the attempt. Nonetheless, going to the free throw line here. That is the seventh foul on the Cougars here, so it's going to be one in the bonus for Leon. It's going to the line. You see here the little crossover. Once he crosses over, he gets the foul call. Leon's five points, five rebounds, two assists. He's one of two from the line. Makes the first. Again, this is the fourth ever matchup between these two schools. Bradley has won the first three, but it's been quite some time going back to 2008. The Braves won 67-61 here at Carver. Braves 30 and 14 all time versus the Ohio Valley Conference as Leon sticks a pair. You see this press again here, a dangerous pass to the middle, but Polk able to come to the ball. Taylor lobbing it up, couldn't get it, but kick it back out. Doss from deep, but short. Leon's tipping to Hickman, back to Leon's. Swings it to Hickman oh. in the mass, and he's fouled. Otherwise, this crowd would have erupted on the dunk attempt by Mass. How about that shovel pass from Connor Hickman? Oh. Catches it right in the middle of the lane, immediately over to Mass. Check out this play right here. SIUE, look at they're really picking up defensive intensity, almost double teaming off of every single pass. And that right there is what's going to lead to opportunities like that. Bradley able to get to the hoop. You've seen the passing ability on display from Hickman. He's had a couple of lobs. And then that no-look underhand shovel as well. Really great vision from Hickman, no doubt. Uh, decision on some of that passing, very impressive. Taylor up for right. And two, three, SIUE overloaded this side for the, the switch. Unable to get the open three off of that long, long pass to the other side. Taylor, top and island fights over the top of that screen. Now just three to shoot. Doss is going to have to launch. He does. It's off left and out of bounds. And a good defensive sequence by Bradley. Braves looking to win their fourth straight at home. Taylor had a sneaky hands, couldn't quite keep it in. Yeah, active hands once again from Taylor, almost getting to that one. Been really impressed with what we've seen from him, but Bradley's made it really hard for him on the offensive side of the ball. It'll, we, we highlighted him at the top, looked like Brian Wardle maybe highlighted him too as well. Doing a really good job making it difficult for him as yeah, you see a turnover. A, he's a terrific scorer and he's going to be in this league here for the next three and a half years in the Ohio Valley. So the Cougars are going to be real excited you know, about him. Yeah, they're just shooting 33% from the field on 5 of 15 shooting too. So, I mean, he's been getting his looks. They haven't gone down. He's going to get that one to go. Didn't go in. But he's going to call the goaltender as it had already hit off the backboard and was coming down once Leons came over from the weak side for the block attempt. Both teams picking up the school court pressure now as Polk once again with wow. the active hands. And a second steal attempt. Great hustle on both sides. Wow. And they're going to call a foul on Hickman as he dove in for the ball. Making a great hustle play, but they're going to call a foul on it. Brian Wardle, the Carter Arena faithful, not, do not agree with that one. That was a miss. All right, fans, let's get on our feet for this great field electric noise meter. I want everybody to scream! Bradley 62, SIU Edwardsville 41, 7.58 to go. But plenty of other action going on in the Valley, uh, Matt. A couple games, you know, getting underway. Uh, other parts of the country too. Yeah, without a doubt, the one that we're keeping our eye on is uh, Missouri State playing host to 12th ranked BYU. Uh, about halfway through the first half, BYU's got a 24-21 lead there. Illinois State and Jackson State are playing a close one in the first half, about 40 miles southeast here in Normal. And another really good one, Loyola Chicago has a first half lead over the call. So we'll keep you updated on those games if there's any 
breaking scoring changes and Evansville Indiana State already winners today and another good one too this evening as well so I don't hosting Southern Miss so a busy day all across the valley. Doss makes two. He's got 12 joining Taylor in double figures. Long pass to Tavaninen. Zip to the other side to Kent. The Braves swing around the horn. Nope, now they do. Tavaninen had poked away, gets it back. Just like that, the shot clock is at eight. Skipped in the corner. Tavaninen's gonna get a look. And Doss secures the rebound. Pruitt at the elbow, goes right, forces one up, and it's been out. Yeah, really tough take there from Pruitt. Did about 95% of it just spins out, as you mentioned, Brian. Tough to see that one not go down. So I saw Yui fall back until it looks like a 3-2 extended here for Kent in the high post to maybe switch it once he gets it. He's popping out, and now Tava Nine replaces him. Hickman, bounce pass to Roberts, who banks it home. There was that vision you were talking about earlier, Brian, a terrific feed from Hickman to the slashing Roberts for the easy bucket. Really great press defense there. Spread it out from the offense. They get another steal. In transition, Roberts, corner, Hickman, three. Going for the payback on the opposite end, the Roberts to Hickman this time, but the three ball rolls out. Taylor scissoring his way through traffic, nearly spins it home, but he'll shoot two. You just see the explosiveness from Taylor there. My goodness, in a half second, he is just around the defense. The only thing Mass can do there is foul. Look at the acceleration right there. Nice move, Rayshon Taylor. SIUE with wins over Youngstown State, Omaha, and Knox. And again, like you said, they played Creighton very tough. Played Marquette very tough as well. Braves will be home next in two weeks from today. Same time, 2 p.m. tip against St. Joseph's. After this, two more home games left in the year of 2021. Hickman baseline, Leon's on the give, has it ripped away, but a whistle. And it's gonna be called on the far right. It's gonna be four on him. We got a couple guys in foul trouble for SIUE. Doss also has four fouls here with about six minutes to go. I wouldn't be surprised to see Coach Maroney just keep those guys in there. And right, there's Shamar and Lamar, the twins, the sons of the late Lorenzen Wright, who is a fantastic player all the way throughout his career, including professionally in the NBA for quite some time, too. Yeah, no doubt. And Lamar wearing the number 55 in honor of his late father. That's the number Lorenzen wore through most of his NBA career, so. Good to honor him with that number. Taylor had it knocked away by Roberts, and Howell comes away with it. Ahead to Roberts, Roberts, three on two. Roberts floats one up and one. How about that? Nobody came up to stop the ball, so Roberts just said, I'm just going to go right down Main Street. The help gets there late, and it's going to be Carter coming over on the block. A great job from Roberts just to be able to absorb this contact and flip it up and in. 16 for Roberts. He leads all gravity scores. And if he does that again, it'll be the fifth time in nine games he's been Bradley's leading scorer. Yeah, 20 points. And that win over you and I, including the game winner on Wednesday, too. So he's just keeping that momentum rolling. Terry Roberts, another great game. His 116 points coming into today are the most by a Brave in their first eight games since Warren Jones had 117 seven years ago. The Braves come away with it. Roberts tried to tip it ahead to Kent. Couldn't do it. Doss the other way in the corner. Taylor measures up from distance. 
Doss the rebound, goes up, no, too strong. Both teams still fighting for it, and Pruitt is fouled. Really good effort. Oh, terrific, 35 minutes into this game and a 24-point contest, and both teams playing like every possession matters, which it certainly does. Great heart and effort on both ends there on the loose balls. So Pruitt, who started his career at Butler Community College, came in averaging eight points, nearly five rebounds. He's 11 of 14 from the foul line, makes the first. Both teams will be in the double bonus the rest of the way. to the light of the Bradley Band. Trying to distract. Mast. Looking back door for Hickman wasn't there. Just tend to shoot here from the Braves. Hickman now with six, lobbed underneath. Mast has good position. Power dribble and the strike from Mast wins out. Yeah, it looked like there was a little contact on that one too, but Mast able to regain the ball after it's knocked out and still score. Nice ball movement here from SIUE. The corner, there's a three that's well short from Pruitt. It's just two of now eight from three this year. Hickman to Mast. Wright was there to come over to knock it away and get a turnover for the Cougars. Pruitt shovels it to Taylor and he'll shoot two. Nice little give and go there from the Cougars out in transition. And Pruitt gives it right back to Taylor. He's going to go to the free throw line once again. Taylor doing a good job kind of manufacturing some opportunities from the free throw line this afternoon. It's in the Braves holding SIUE to 29% from the floor. Even going into this year, they're one of eight schools that hold their opponents to under 42% from the field in each of the last five seasons. Is that good? It's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, they're just that consistency, and they've done it again so far this year. Just two of 16 from three for SIUE. Who's battled the Cougars have this in entire game. Henry on the low block. That Lamar Wright straight up tremendous defense. But Deshaun Henry just able to kind of draw that contact to create a little bit of separation, just flings it up there and somehow hits it off the glass and in. Really impressive. Land's got his hands in there, but they're going to say he got some arm on the reach in attempt. So two foul shots coming for the Cougars. Heading into our last timeout. Bradley trying to close it out at home, up 25. The best thing to order is when you are sitting at soccer practice, order it through your phone while you're sitting there, and then you go and pick it up. But you're much more of a planner than me. I am, and that's what I love about you. Yes. You know, I'm not that prepared. It's more seat in my pants. Give a gift with her name on it. Personalize the holidays with one-of-a-kind gifts she'll remember. Thoughtfully designed by you for her. Give fewer, better, every day, Kuyana. Bradley huddling up, 
Trying to finish strong here up 25 over SIU Edwardsville with Matt McLean. I am Brian Vito back here in our final four minute stretch between the Braves and the Cougars. Braves bidding to get within one game of 500, looking for their fourth win of the season. They led by 19 at the break. They've stretched it out to a 25 point margin here. And you know, they have a few guys in double figures, Matt, but it's pretty been pretty balanced throughout offensively. Extremely balanced overall. I mean, Bradley shooting 63.6% .6 from the field. Six guys for Bradley have at least nine wow. points, led by Terry Roberts to 17. But you just go down the line. Malavai Leon's nine points, Rick Mass nine points, Vila Tavaninen's had three threes. Deshaun Henry's been an you know, absolute force the entire game. Kent with, you know, some three balls off the bench. Everybody getting getting involved tonight, including Connor Hickman, has been impressive as, as well once again. Doss has been impressive for the Cougars. He's got 13, and he's a perfect 7 of 7 from the line. And he came in again at just 52%, so a good sign for, for him and SIUE. And he's knocked down now all eight for the Cougars. We talked about the Braves' prowess shooting percentage-wise. They're bidding to go 4-0 this year when they shoot at least 44%. And if they're able to stay over 50%, this will be 32 straight wins for Bradley when they shoot 50% or better. Just speaks to the defensive effort and success they've had over the last several years that we just talked about moments ago. Howell drives baseline, kicks it opposite corner, quick trigger, catch for three, his fourth of the game. Really a great job, Mikey Howell driving the baseline, sucking the defense in, and Ken is wide open in the far corner. Threads the needle, Howell does with the assist over to Ken, who buries another three ball. I believe that's a season high now for Kent. Largest output since the regular season finale last year at home against Drake. There's a shorthanded able to get a win. Hickman led that one beautifully. Three on two for Powell, but they find Boya underneath and he's bumped from behind. And again, two free throws rest of the way for both sides, so Ari will shoot two. That's going to be five fouls on Lamar, right? His afternoon is over. They're battling down low with Boya and the big man all game. Just unfortunate here to pick up his fifth foul. Maxicano will come in. Zeke Montgomery, a pair of freshmen in for Bradley. Gets all of it off of the glass. Boya just a, a defensive stalwart for the Braves. Another block shot. That's, that's on his tally. Yeah, that's their 10th of the game. Their second in the Valley coming in in blocks per game. 36th in the country. And their margin over the opposition in that department is really significant. It's now 52 to 20. They've outblocked wow. their opponents. This year, and that is one of the strengths is that ring protection is Connor has the first one drop out. Connor Linky, the, the sophomore, checks in for his first action. And Brian's going back to the, the block shot. We've seen a couple highlight blocks, you know, from Deshaun Henry. We see that one from Ari Boyle. That's his 76th block in 62 career games. And not too shabby from Ari Boya, just one of those guys who's always involved in the defensive end. Carter steps into a three. Shamar Wright gives chase, comes up with it, and traveled first. Riley Berger, Berger, my guy, checking in for Connor Hickman. Good to see Riley back after an injury last year, yeah. coming back. And you know, Bradley, the last couple of seasons have had such a hard time with injuries and stuff. Their walk-ons and managers have been such a crucial part of their success and what they've been able to do. Just the practice. And Riley's been a big part of that. Happy to see him get two minutes of game time today. 
So Linky will have a chance for his first point, making his third appearance. Again, the Braves will be at Toledo in their next contest. SIUE against Purdue Fort Wayne. We talked about them just playing a lot away from Edwardsville, and they'll have three straight at home after this one. They will definitely be happy to be back in Southern Illinois after oh. this one. How about that? Curtis on the follow. Gano tries to shovel it to Linky, gets it back. Montgomery jab step thought about a three, pulls it out. Isolated against Williams. Skips it to Berger. Darius Hanna. Montgomery sidesteps into a three. That's off right and it goes back to SIUE. So we talked about Bradley in the open saying, hey, they want to build off their last two games, continue their momentum, and they've done exactly that here today. Yeah, they have. And if you think about this being their third straight win now, coming back from that one and five start, they've got a respectable four and five record with this result. And now you have come into another part of your schedule where you're going to be tested. You know, these next three games, three, four games stretch is going to be really, really difficult for the Braves. So let's see what they've learned from, you know, these last three victories and, and what they can do moving forward. You got to at Toledo up next. And you, then you host a really good St. Joe's team. And then you're doing another tournament down at the uh, El Paso, Texas Sun Bowl Invitational. So you're going to play a couple of really tough opponents down there as well. So it's a good opportunity for Bradley to see what they've learned here in this first uh, nine game stretch. Substitution, Michael Mattis will come in for SIUE. Under a minute to go. Hannah to the rim. Sean takes, just kind of leaves it short. SIUE pushing the tempo. Carter. Curtis, no, Montgomery's there. The shot clock is off. Berger in the corner driving baseline. Let's see if he can get a shot off. He does, and the run just bounces off. Hulk is fouled. is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. You saw him just seconds ago. That's Terry Roberts. And Matt, again, Terry Roberts is, is fantastic. So, yeah, leads the Braves in scoring with 17 points on 7 of 11 shooting, doing a little bit of everything with four rebounds and four assists as well. Terry Roberts, a player of the game, leading Bradley to another victory, their third straight. 55 result over SIU. That'll do it here from Carver Arena. That's the final for you. Bradley, who really stretched this lead in the latter portion of that first half, opened up a 19 point advantage. Never really dissipated from that. I think it got as low as maybe 17 one time and then ballooned back up to our, our final margin. It went by as many as 30, if I'm not mistaken. So 25 point lead for win for Bradley here at home. They do win their third straight. They win their fourth straight at home. They're now four and five on the season. And 
We know that that's what this program and this team has done the last several years is this is not the finished product, certainly, but they always continuously get better throughout they the do. year. And we've, we're seeing evidence of that once again. And it's, it starts and ends with defense for Bradley. I mean, today, SIUE shoots just under 28% from the field. Bradley's offense, you know, steps up in a big way to scoring 80 points off of 50% shooting from the field. Bradley just kind of able to dictate this from start to finish. That eight-minute run at the end of the set, first half where they went 22 to four really was the difference in a 25-point victory. Yeah, and then you look at, again, we talked about a player of the game. We could have picked several different Braves, three players in double figures, but, man, again, Terry Roberts, the leading scorer on the 17 points out, a 20-point performance, including the game winner against Northern Iowa. Certainly no letdown game from him. Yeah, and he made it happen all across the board. He had four rebounds and four assists. He was really just a floor general. You see him getting involved in the lane, doing a little bit of everything. Terry Roberts is outstanding once again for the Braves. So that'll wrap it up from Carver Arena for my partner Matt McLean and everyone on our Chef Tech production crew. I'm Brian Vito saying so long from Carver Arena where the final it's the Bradley Braves 80, the SIU Edwardsville Cougars 55. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. This has been a presentation of ESPN.